Hey guys, um, okay, so now that you all have a very good understanding of what set and jump and long jump do, I'm gonna go through uh, what my spawn thread and my yield thread are doing right now in the given code. So this is just a copy of the code that's in um, mythreads.c, or mythreads1.c. Uh, it's, this is the given code, I'm just gonna go through it and kind of draw out what it does so that you guys understand kind of how how they're using set jump and long jump to approach um, spawning and yielding to different threads. Okay, so first spawn. Spawn is the trickiest function. So whenever you're doing anything with long jump and set jump, you want to draw out your stack. Always, always. So I'm going to assume that there was a main at some point in time which is probably true. And then from main, we called my spawn. My spawn. Okay. So spawn, whenever you create a new stack frame, first you put the parameters in. So func goes in here, and then param goes in here. Okay. And then the first thing you do is check if my init threads was called, that, that's fine. And now you set jump. So at this point, the stack pointer is right here. And we're set jumping on thread zero's environment. So I'm just going to call that zero.env.stack pointer is going to be right there. And then zero.env.program counter is going to be right here. You always want to remember where those two things are. Um, okay, and then because this is the first time we call set jump, it saves the program counter and the stack pointer, and as we know, it returns zero. So we go in here, and then we create this s. So a lot of students aren't really sure like what s does. S stack size is a huge array. It's just huge. Like it goes all the way up here. No, what did I do? Let's see if I can undo that. Okay. Cool. So, like I was saying, S is huge. It goes like all the way up here. I'm, I'm gonna separate these things, but they're all part of my spawn. Okay? So we create this huge array, and then we create uh, this local f so f and we set it equal to func and then we create this p and we set it equal to param okay and then we we do a check to make sure that we actually did um, create this huge array and then we call set jump again but this time it's on thread one's environment which is different from thread zero's environment, okay? So when we call set jump, our stack pointer is all the way up here, and so that's where one's environment stack pointer is going to be. Okay? And then the program counter is down here, so one's environment uh, env program counter is here where we call set jump for one's environment, okay? So we have two environments here, zero's environment and one's environment, like two bookmarks. Okay. And then we long jump to zero's environment. So what's that going to do? That's going to reset our stack pointer. So remember our stack pointer, which was pointing here, because that's the top of our stack, is now going to point all the way down here, okay? And then our program counter, which was pointing to, to actually, it was pointing to, let me, let me delete that. Okay. So our program counter, which was pointing to that line of code, is now going to point all the way up here to where zero's program counter was. So... Alright, there we go. You guys get the idea. So we're going to go all the way back up here to where the if was. And now note that we passed in a 1 to long jump. 
So this is going to return a 1, which is different than 0. And so we're going to exit out of this if and go down here. Down here, we're going to set um, one the thread 1 to be valid because everything is now set up. What do we mean by everything is now set up? Basically, thread 0 has like this whole space is for thread 0. It's its space to grow and call functions and not interfere with thread 1. And then anything above that, we're going to say is for thread 1. And how we did that is by saving the stack pointer, right? We save the stack pointer of one up there, so when 1 starts executing, it's going to jump up there. And so that's why thread 1 stack is up here, and thread 0 stack is down here. And then we've also set p to param and f to func, so that 1 can do some work when it's called. So that's by, by what we mean by everything is set up. Okay? And then we return. Cool. Now, when we return our stack pointer now points here. Now, I, you might or might not have learned this in 30, but when you return for a fun from a function, the stack pointer moves, but the stack isn't actually cleared, and that's kind of crucial here. If we cleared the stack, this whole thing would like go away, um, and and that would be bad <laughs> because we we had everything set up for for one to work. So because we don't clear it because it's too expensive to just clear the stack every time, we just overwrite it with new stack frames, as we'll see right now, and as we saw in the in the previous video too. We don't bother to clear things. So this, these two things up here are still there. Um, they haven't been overwritten by anything, and as long as they're not overwritten by anything, they're gonna stay there. Okay, even though we return from the function, right? So we return, and let's assume later, so since we returned, um, my spawn's no longer being called, let's assume later we call yield. My yield. Okay, so I have the code here for yield. Yield takes in a t, so this is going to overwrite the first parameter, func is now going to be t. This is why we need to save p and f up here, because param and func might be overwritten by new functions, particularly when we call yield, as you can see, func is already being overwritten by something else. So it's important to save it after this cushion of s. s is our cushion. cushion. Right? It protects um, kind of one stack to not be overridden by stuff that zero is calling. Cool. So uh, yield gets a t, and I think that's it. That doesn't have any local variables. It checks in it threads, and then it checks if t is valid, which it is because we set one to valid up here. And then, um, oh right, I'm assuming that I'm calling, I'm yielding to one for my my example. So t equals one. Okay. One is indeed valid, and then we go, all right, set jump one minus t, well, one minus one is zero, so set jump zero, and now the stack, and here it gets real interesting. Zero's environment was previously saved here, right? That was at this point in the code. I'm going to overwrite that with where my stack pointer currently is. Now, my stack pointer was here. But because we created t, my stack pointer is now here. Okay? And so that's what zero's environment is now going to point. Right here. Okay? So no longer here. It points to this, this location in the code, which is the stack frame for my yield. These. No, no, no. I don't know how I keep doing that. Get it back. Okay. Cool. Okay, yes. So the stack pointer is now up there after t, and that's where zero stack pointer is gonna go. And then zero's program counter was saved up here. But we're going to overwrite that, and I'm just gonna erase that because there's just no way we can make that look clean. Okay. Uh, 
let's see, is this plus one? Okay. Um, so now, zeros environments program counter is going to go down in yield, which was where it was, down here. When we call set jump here. So this is zero, because one minus one is zero. Zero's environment program counter get goes in this if. Okay. So we overwrote the previous stuff that we saved with new stuff. So this tag pointer is here right after T. And the program counter is down here right at that if. Beautiful. Okay. And then we long jump to T. T is 1, so we're long jumping to 1. Um, so when we long jump to 1, we set our program counter to wherever 1's program counter was. So that's here. So our PC, which was previously all the way here, right? That's where our PC was. Our PC was at that uh, long jump. It is now going to jump to this location, which is where we saved 1's PC. And then our stack pointer, which was pointing here, is Alright, where was I? Our stack pointer, right, which was pointing here right after the T, is now going to point, let's erase some stuff, okay, so zeros environments here, and then our stack pointer is going to point back to where once environment stack pointer was, so down here. So our stack pointer jumped from being here to being all the way there. Okay. Cool. And then, so we, we jump up here in our stack. So we are now up here in our stack. And we jumped in our code to that point, right here. We return whatever it is was our thing for long jump, our parameter. So let's look at what that was. That was a 1. So we're going to return 1. 1 is not equal to 0, so we go here. So our program counter is now here. Alright, pay close attention. This part's important. At this point, we are going to look for f. f is right here. Then we are going to look for p. p is right there. And we're going to call f. f is a function. So we're going to create a new stack frame. for f and the first parameter for f is p so we're going to set um, and then f's parameter might be called something different it doesn't have to be called p so let's assume f looks like this where it took in an int x just, just as an example so then x which was the parameter for, for our f function is going to be set to whatever p was and then you're going to create f's local variables and whatever and if f calls new functions it's going to keep growing note that it's going to grow that way right so our stack pointer is going to go up and it is never ever ever going to interfere with zero stuff ever so that's why we want that cushion right so zero doesn't interfere with one stuff and because the stack pointer only goes up one never interferes with zero stuff and this is all done through just using set jump and long jump to kind of create that space for them in the stack. Let's ignore this. Okay. Um, cool. And and then finally, once F and P finish, we call exit thread, and that exits one, and then it'll do some cleanup. You guys can figure out how to do that. Um, but that is basically how spawn and yield work. Um, hopefully, that made it a little bit clearer. I know the code can be a little confusing. Um, so try to think about, first, how do you generalize this? So right now, 1 can only yield to 0, and 0 can only yield to 1. So think about how to generalize it so any one of them can yield to any other. So like 1 can yield to itself, 
and to 0, and 0 can yield to itself and to 1. Right? Generalize it that way. I think that's part B. Um, and then think about how you can generalize it to more than two threads, more than just 0 and 1. Like, what if I want to have five threads or ten threads or whatever? Um, so, so start thinking about how you might be able to do that be, now that you know how, how this whole thing worked out. Okay? Cool. And that is it for this part.